what are we getting into today? So I guarantee that you are going to relate to this episode. At least I, I am very confident that you're going to relate to this episode. But maybe you won't. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just being salty. And maybe it's just because I've I have there's been too much rain in the forecast. <laughs> I haven't been able to do anything outdoors in a long time. It seems like maybe I'm just salty about it. I'm not sure. But I kind of feel strongly about some of my opinions on some hiking influencers and kind of the way they kind of project their life and how that has consequences for the people that are watching them. Now, let me just start out by saying that there's certain people that are even my friends on online that I just don't like I follow them because I'm their friend, but I'll purposely do things like I'll mute their stories, which basically means if on Instagram is that you don't, you don't see their stories when they post them or I'll mute their posts. And the reason why is because I know that every weekend they're out doing something really cool, which is awesome for them. I love that. But the weekends that I'm not doing something cool and I'm home like I have been the last month because of the weather here. It's super tough for me to look at those stories. It's super tough for me to see them doing these really fun things and I'm stuck at home or whatever. And it's funny because I never really thought that I had FOMO. Fear of missing out. I never I never really have before like I always kind of thought FOMO related to partying, doing things like that, right? And I've never had that, really. But I totally have adventure FOMO. So again, when I see other people, and even if they're just my friends, it's hard for, it actually makes me feel bad about myself if I am not out there crushing it that in that particular weekend. So why is it that we feel like that? And how do other outdoor creators and other outdoor influencers kind of contribute to that. Well, first let's take a let's take a look at the definition of a influencer. So an influencer is people that use their audience and authenticity to inspire people. Now, in my opinion, I would say that most I would say like a good like 8 out of 10 influencers, especially if in the outdoors, they definitely inspire people to go places, but I think that they are far from authentic. <laughs> now I'm, and I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm not guilty of this at some points too. Do I show highlights of things and not the low lights? Sure I do. And I have before, but one thing I have seen, especially when I have shared things uh, like my long form YouTube videos on the Colorado trail things on the J the John Muir trail. I've seen a lot like a very big pattern of comments that are like, Hey, I can totally relate to this. I love that you're showing not only the good things, but you're also showing like the bad things about through hiking, yada, yada, yada. So I really thought about that for a second. I was like, why that is, Interesting that they say that. And it's not like I was strategically trying to do that in any of my stuff. The way that I, I view it is that these are like the real life things that are happening to me on the trail. And it would be kind of like a lie to not show them happening. Right. So really kind of interesting things that I've seen. Yeah. Just like patterns on my videos and things like that. Now, for an example, real quick, like a teacher the other day, an old teacher that I had in high school actually DM'd me and was like, hey, you know, I talked to your mom and we're, we're from small town, Wisconsin. I mean, everybody knows everybody, 4,000 people, right? A couple stoplights. 
and where I graduated high school, she, she used to teach there. And she's like, Hey, I talked to your mom at pickleball the other day. And she says, you're doing great. And I'm so impressed by you and blah, blah, blah. Like all that kind of stuff. And I was just like, Hey, how's it going? And I said, Hey, thanks so much for reaching out, blah, blah, blah. But I, and this was before I even brainstormed this video, but I was just like, Hey, yeah, for sure. It's been great. Super grateful. But you know, there's obviously challenges that along the way too, that I've had to encounter and stuff. And I think the reason I do that is because I want to still be relatable to people because again, you always see people online and it's always like the best version of themselves. You think about it. I mean, think about the first six months you've ever dated somebody. You are on your best behavior. You're really not, you're above baseline. <laughs> Let's say that you're above your baseline of what you actually act like, right? You really don't know anybody dating wise, in my opinion, until you're with them like a year and a half, two years. That's when things, that's like when their actual personality comes out. And so it's like the same thing with this. So why do I show like some of the bad sides and why do other people don't? Well, for me, it's like, like I said, I want to be relatable to people and I don't want them feeling bad when they see my content. I want them to be like, Hey, there is challenges when you go on a hike. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. The other day I, I shared a post about my rash that I got on the Colorado trail. That was absolutely horrid. That things, those things happen. And I think if people don't see those things, then, then they get inspired by somebody that has this crazy, awesome aesthetic on Instagram or these super cool videos, they go out and do it themselves. They encounter these challenges, these setbacks, these obstacles. It then becomes something where they're like, oh, this wasn't supposed to happen. And then they quit because they don't see the, they don't see that that's normal. So that's something that I like, I really want to normalize. Now in my head, I have an example of two different influencers and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of describe their posts. Okay. So one of her last, one of their last posts was basically a slow motion shot of her turning around with a, like a really inspirational song where, you know, like the song of like where everything feels like the movies, you know, like it's like that, that song was playing and I'm not showing these because I don't want to put these people on blast. This is not the person that I am, but it's just an example for you. So she's turning around slow motion, you know, and her hair is, and, and there's a ton of penguins behind her. Like what <laughs> caption is just me and 300,000 King penguins. Yada, yada, yada. The rest of the post goes. And then as cliche, and then it goes on to say, as cliche as it is to say, this is one of the places that feels more like fantasy than reality. Cool. So you as sitting here in, let's just take your living in Oregon where it just doesn't stop raining, <laughs> which is why I'm moving, which is why I've already done a video on this. Me scrolling through my feed, that doesn't necessarily really inspire me. That to me, I don't know. Now, how that would inspire me is if you told me a story up until that point where like of the real life things that actually happened. Oh, yeah, we got our plane was late. We got delayed. We had this or that, blah, 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 whatever. That to me would be a little bit, I guess, more inspiring, like some kind of a story around with it. Another influencer. Okay, she lists her favorite travel experiences and she lists them all in order, right? And it's like all of these like crazy things, like hiking up to see a volcano, doing this, doing that. Again, cool to save on your phone and to be like, hey, this could be like a bucket list thing for me. But again, what are the backstories to some of these things? Like what are, what are some of the challenges that you've seen? Another post that she had was in March, I hit a new, and this is the caption in March, I hit a new social media milestone, my highest paying month at just over $14,000. Again, as somebody that's even in that world, like that is a pretty high, that's a very high number for a monthly creator like salary. Again, you're not seeing the 
okay, 30% that they're taking out for taxes. You're not seeing like how many reshoots you probably had to do or back and forth with the brand. It's just like, you just have this one thing. So there's no story behind it. And that's something that I just don't, it just kind of gives me the ick. That that post especially just kind of gives me the ick. And I think both of these creators are very talented. But I what I again, what I wish there would be more is more backstory, more of here's the things that went wrong to find relatability there. Again, this could just be the fact that I, because I, I can tell you from experience that this is worth, like I get the FOMO of this for myself worse when it's in the winter or the spring where I haven't been doing adventures as much as I usually do late spring, summer, fall. So if I come back from an adventure and I already like charged up a mountain or whatever, and I see this stuff and I'm like, I'm like good for them. And I'm all about the law of attraction. I want people to have really good things, but it is difficult seeing it where it's like every single post is like this kind of weird unattainable feeling looking thing. But again, I could just be, I could just be complaining. I, I'm not quite sure. This is why I'm doing this as a podcast. Cause I would love to hear other people's opinions on this, but posts like these are a dime a dozen. You see any kind of travel vlog, travel documentary or anything like that. A lot of them are just like, they really play up the highlights and there's really not a lot of low lights. And again, like I said, most of the comments on my YouTube was the fact that I really enjoyed like the re relatability on this stuff. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up there, by the way. So I always want to make sure my audio is working. <laughs> let me, so let me give you another example. So kind of even getting out of like the influencer space, so I, when I was younger, when I was a, in, I was a teenager in the Midwest, I used to watch hunting channels and I don't know what your stance is on hunting, all that type of stuff. But I mean, I was, I grew up in the Midwest, Wisconsin, basically the first day of deer season was a national holiday. But besides the point is that these hunting channels would always have programs on of these people going hunting. Right. and. I used to get so frustrated by how this is a 30 minute episode, right? 20 minutes probably after all the ads. And I would get so frustrated by how they would so quickly find the animals that they were trying to get. And so then I would go out and try to replicate this in my own life. And I would just end up getting super frustrated because that's just not, it wasn't reality. This just was not reality because obviously they can't do a you know, an all day, like it wouldn't make any sense, but it's not reality. And so I think, again, that's something that has kind of fed into me when I see some of these influencers just kind of post and it's fine. Like if it's a once in a, you know, every, every now and then, but it's like every single post is like, oh my gosh. Okay. We get it. We get it. Now I want to juxtapose this though, with someone that I'm a huge fan of actually, and that's on YouTube. And his name, you should totally check out his account on YouTube. It's Primal Outdoors. I love this guy's content. I think the reason, and I've talked about this with Haley, my fiance. I was like, the reason we think that we really like him is because he's so genuine about how much he loves the outdoors. And so just a little context, he's like a, he's like a van lifer guy. And he'll go out and he, he's had this transition. I remember when I first moved to Oregon, he had like a smaller channel. He was like into hunting. He was into like bush crafting, that type of stuff. It slowly transitioned into like van life. And now he's just full time in his van, had a pull behind trailer for a while. Then it's just like cool to see this progression, but regardless, super cinematic stuff. But what really resonates with me is just like you can tell that he loves making videos. You can tell that he loves being outside by himself in his van. He's just very genuine about it. And if you watch any of his videos, I'll, I'll link up like a video in the description after this. I think you're going to get that feeling too. And so to me, I think it's maybe the genuine nature of someone that really kind of resonates with me and makes it really not get that ick factor and really 
that's what kind of more inspires me because I'll watch his content and be like, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting the van tomorrow, <laughs> you know, or something like that. And so for people with an audience, I believe it's, it's our duty. We need to inspire people, but we also need to relate to them. Otherwise it's going to feel out of reach for all of the reasons that I said a few minutes ago. So you have to have a story. It cannot just be the the highlights, right? There, there can't be, oh, I just did this. I went from A to B to C and I'm done. No, like there's ugly parts between every adventure, no matter how, like you're either dehydrated, you know, anything, all the outdoors is home to randomness. And if you don't show those ugly parts, you put these unrealistic ideas in people's heads that an adventure needs to be like X, Y, and Z. And if it doesn't go like that, you're doing it wrong. And that discouraged me out of hunting. And I think that could discourage people out of the outdoors. So again, I'm all for the law of attraction. I want success for all people, but I would be lying to you if I didn't say that I got feelings of like anxiety, depression, that type of stuff when and this is coming from somebody that I feel like I've done pretty cool things too in my life. But when I see other people doing that, I'm not doing it at the time, or I just see like all this highlight reel, I still get those feelings. So yeah, I, I would love to hear what like other people's kind of opinions are on this. If maybe if I'm way off of the, the mark with this, or if they kind of get these feelings of of FOMO as well. But like I said, the feelings of this is worse when my adventure cup isn't full, like winter, springtime. That's it. That's where it makes me feel <laughs> that makes, that's where it makes me feel the worst. So what is the solution to this? Well, I think I already kind of talked about it, which was show more realistic stuff and make sure people know that it's okay to have challenges on a through hike, on a hike a regular hike, a day hike, that there's challenges with being a creator, that there's challenges with being an influencer. Like being an influencer is awesome. Being a creator is awesome. But there's a lot of times where you're just like, what am I doing? It's a big roller coaster. That's why I've done like the updates on quitting my job, right? So be relatable to people. So that's my opinion on this whole thing. So shorter one today. But before I wrap up, I have a, a comp. This is a good comment. So unedited lens, by the way, thank you for coming on the old chat. Says, I bought an Earth Roamer Jeep XVJP after watching a similar channel you watch. Best purchase. That's awesome. See, that's what I'm talking about. It's like inspirational stuff like that, that you can be, you can relate to. And awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So you're definitely relatable. No, I appreciate that. And it's, it's funny. Cause it's like, I never thought of that as something as a connection point, maybe really for audiences, never really thought about that until I started getting all those, all those YouTube comments on my through hikes and stuff. They're just like, Oh my gosh, like you show like the, the bad parts of through hiking. One of the one video that's done really well, or a couple of videos that I have is on both the JMT and the CT. What I have done, I'll leave them linked below is I've put, <laughs> I hate the, it's a video on, I hate the JMT and I hate the Colorado trail. And basically I just went through all my videos and it's like where I'm pretty much complaining or bitching. <laughs> I spliced it all up and I like overlaid like a funny song to it, like a, like a beautiful sunny song to it. And it's pretty funny. And just like the comments are hilarious. They're just like, oh my gosh, like this is exactly how I feel. Yada, yada, yada. And, you know, good connection point with the audience. So going forward, I would love to keep sharing more relatable stuff like that. And just try to, yeah, try to try to be honest. Obviously, I, I have my <laughs> screw ups as well. So, and I have in the past. And sometimes I still post the highlights, right? Because you still do want to be, and I think a lot of people posting highlights and things like they really want to be credible in the audience's eyes a lot of times. So if I go and I do the uh, through hike of the PCT or something, it's like, 
you're, I mean, you're obviously, you're definitely going to show the finish shot, all that type of stuff, but like you want to be credible in the, in your audience's eyes, or you want to have that as social proof, which is totally cool. And you totally should. But when it becomes, it's like every single post, these weird unattainable goals, not, I don't want to say unattainable, but just, they seem far off for the time or whatever, for somebody looking at them. I think that could be detrimental. So if you like this video, please give a like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. Follow this on the Peanut Butter Mountains podcast on Spotify. I'm trying to do a lot of these. And I appreciate you guys coming on again. I know it was a little bit short today, but just wanted to get some things off my chest. So appreciate everybody. And thanks for tuning in with me. We'll see you for the next live.